Bawa is like a, a trap. It's like a um, screen that you put in your sink. I was trying to figure out an, an, a, a, a simile to this and I came up with the, okay, it's like, it's like the, um, the screen that you put in your drain in the kitchen sink and you dump stuff in, you know, you're throwing away most of what you think was left uh, from an event. But there's a residual, a residual that stays, and it's what gets caught in the screen. And people are funny. Some people are really clean in the kitchen. Some people are clean with the washing machine, and they don't know that there's a trap in it that you're supposed to clean every once in a while. You're supposed to take the trap out of the washing machine, side inside the inside where it washes, and clean it out. You know, that's the same sort of thing, kind of a trap. So it's you're cleaning everything, but this stuff gets trapped. And that's the way I see the contents of your library. The contents of your reaction library are um, accidentally just not, you don't know quite how to clean it out. You don't know how to get rid of it all the way. And we've all done this. Everybody does it as they're growing up. Everybody, everybody uh, goes through events and um, so during this time, when you're listening to this about VAWA, I want you to think about what would you question about the reason for learning about the Paticca Samapada? What makes the difference in the person when they learn about the Paticca Samapada? And, um, and what, what, um, what is it um, that seems to change for them if they pay attention to it? And it's a lot of, couple ifs here, if you hear it, and you and you then you write it down and you learn it and you say it and then you will start watching it then things really do start to change if you just listen to me teach it to you and well you walk away from it and think well i heard about that it's kind of like saying well i already heard that sutta and we don't ever do that in twim <laughs> because in the beginning what you heard in a sutta was one thing but what you did here six months later or a year later is something completely different. And you keep having these little epiphanies, these little surprise learning points that you get, these pieces of uh, insights that happen to expand the first thing that you saw if you go back and use them again and again. Yeah. What is habitual tendency in the line? Now, remember, we were starting at death because we were looking at death is caused by birth. Birth is caused by this link, habitual tendency, which is causing a burst of energy to push forward. And one of the things I was interested in when I first learned about uh, dependent origination, when I first was trying to learn it myself, I was curious about the wheel of samsara. This doesn't exist in Christianity, so I was very curious. Here is this wheel, but nobody's talking about what is it that pushes the wheel around. And so that is one of the things that we want to keep an eye on in this. Where does it get the energy to actually be a wheel that spins and keeps spinning and you have trouble jumping off of it? But where is the energy coming from? And this spot is a hot surge of energy. It's a push. It's a. It's just before the birth, uh, birth of the, um, the birth of the action happens. Is like the final push, you know. But this one is at this point. This is um, you're going into third gear, and I, I think I, if I haven't, you haven't seen that before. I'll show you the little simile of the car before we get through with this. So what is habitual tendency or what is bawa about? First, you really need to understand the history of the word bawa. And as far as we can figure out, the earliest English translation for it was being. And being doesn't cut it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make you feel what's happening in the bawa link. That's a bit of a problem. And so, the next one that happened was someone said it means experience. So it takes you into the experience. It's going to flow into the experience and be born. It's going to go from here. Okay, fine. But um, 
that still didn't work to improve meditators or improve the rate that people were able to get to attainments or anything like that wasn't happening. The next one was becoming and becoming that had motion in it more than being or experience. Um, becoming gave you the idea something was moving. Okay. And so where some energy was involved but the practical purpose, uh, for practical operational reasons having to do with the meditation, we call this link habitual tendencies. Because when we start to examine what Bawa was, you have the craving happening, and then you have the clinging happening, and then you have this Bawa sitting here. And the craving was the, I don't like this, and then the Clinging was the expansion of the story about why you don't like it. And then there was another thing that happened where you decided, you made a decision about intention, with what's going to happen here. And that comes out of the Bawa link. So something was there, something was stored. And Bhante talked to um, Usil Ananda about this before he died. And he was on the West Coast, it was his teacher. And um, he was a great authority on the translations and everything. He listened very carefully to what Bonte was explaining. And he said, yes, yes, that makes really good sense. So calling it habitual tendencies, once it's explained, that's why we call it the habitual tendencies. We call it habitual tendencies because it's the place where you're storing the habits of how you usually react to things based on what? Based on one of the biggest problems for suffering. And that's the problem of the past influencing this part, because when you're in your present time car, here you go, you're in your present time car, you have kept stuff inside the car <laughs> from the past, and you're pulling it along. And you tend to, as long as it's in the car, Oh, it's there. That's what I should do because it's just like that time, like before in the past. So this is the place where all of your knee-jerk emotional reactions live. They just happen like that. Almost no thought goes into them at all. You, you, what happened was you touched a re-stimulation point in what was happening in the present time that triggered off a tendency to pop up for you to give birth to a reaction. And it comes from this link. It's the place where all the knee-jerk emotional reactions live. And their source is un unanimously always derived from past personal events and experiences in your life. So are you ready to continue? And Q says, yep, I think I am. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Well, so what's the habitual tendency link about? This is a tiny, the way we explain it, and I think it works really well. I'm convinced now this is really good. It's a tiny library in your head, which holds the source of all knee-jerk personal reactions and untrained mind acts out. That's what it is. All people suffer when this went from this, when they are without knowledge of what this link actually is and how it works. So an untrained mind, which most of us were before we found dependent origination, if we're not taught about this in school, this is in there and this is happening all the time. It's where we get in trouble. So the existence of the Bawa link is explaining the source of your reactions, the purpose of the link, doesn't seem like much at first, but it certainly does exist. Knee-jerk reactions are repeated reactions without realization and how or why they happen. You can pinpoint your own routine reactions and prove this in the case of keeping a journal of your behavior for with people for a week or two. A lot of this, this entry is about keeping a small journal to test this out, what I'm saying. And then you review it and it points out the repetition of your behavior when you reread it. 
So this link serves as a storage facility where records of past emotional habits live. This is the place uh, that our negative and positive reactive emotions are stored. Sometimes there are um, positive emotions that are in there that are overly emotional and something triggers you. This is just the same as when that happens when I was like 12 or something and now I'm 16 or 18 or 20 years old and I just go again, you know, with this huge, big emotional reaction. It's just that your imprint is popping up from what was like this before and you're just reacting and it's the habit of the mind. Do you have any emotional habits? Ask yourself, do you ever experience repeat opinions, saying or doing anything in a relationship with someone the same way many times over? Have you ever heard someone say to you, why do you always say or do the same thing over and over again? Whenever we talk about this or that, where we go here or there or something, have you ever been in a relationship where they get annoyed because the reaction is the same? Our minds are not open and to possibilities. It's not natural in the human scheme of things right now. We seem to be more like wanting to belong to a group and wanting to lock on to an opinion to feel comfortable and more secure. Q says, well, yes, I, I have. Don't, don't we all have something like that in our family relationship growing up with somebody in the family even? All of us probably do have something like that. Having habits is not unique and all human beings have patterns of emotional behavior. Some of the habits are wholesome and can help us in life, but others are unwholesome and can cause us suffering. If we look closely at this habitual tendency link, it is our secret personal library of emotional tendencies based on our past experiences. And some of these tendencies may be trickling down from a previous life as well. They are the fruit of past actions, okay? Now, these fruits of past actions can be tricky. It can turn out that at a particular age in your life, suddenly you are afraid of something that never bothered you up to that age. This happened to me at 50 one years old, where I had never been afraid of heights before. And all of a sudden I was terrified. And having to go back and figure out what exactly was that, how, how did that happen, was a fascinating journey for about a year's period of time. But these tendencies live in a more or less unconscious corner of your mind. They can become re-stimulated or set off by personal craving and clinging links that happen in the present time actions. And this link can pop up and appear as our emotional reactions play out during social exchanges. In other words, we act the way we do based on re-stimulation of previous sense-based contact, feeling, craving, and clinging experiences. Past experiences dominate the untrained mind. It's about 85% of your life for the average person with an untrained mind. That's what basically research says about it. You're living past over and over and over again, rather than being clear in the present time. When a similar sight, sound, odor, taste, or sensation, or thought contact is similar in a, to a previous time, this is what sets it off. Once re-stimulated in this new interaction, the same emotional reaction is re-stimulated and happens again. And this is where the sixth sense space ties into the links of habitual tendency. Emotional tendencies can appear to be routine reactions. They pop up and are then born and replayed again to present time occurrences. Most of this doesn't even register to us if we do not have proper knowledge. 
And afterwards, we don't even know why we thought something or said something in the way we did. And probably we would deny it is anything except from this here and now. After it occurs, in retrospect, we probably will suffer restlessness, guilt, and remorse and not understand why. Or maybe it will cause sloth and torpor. So this is another thing. It triggers, it triggers a lot of times. This is what triggers the five hindrances. What is an example of this? Well, I bet you know someone who has talked with you in your life who might have had a girlfriend or a boyfriend break up with them because they were having problems. Oh, yeah, I do. Well, perhaps they told you something like, my girl seems to react the same way every time I try to talk to her about certain things. We never get to deciding things. She gets angry and then doesn't like to sit down and talk at all. And there doesn't seem to be any reason for this to be happening. She always runs away from working things out. Or maybe you heard there was a mother-daughter relationship problem where every time the young person was asked to clean up their room, they acted out in an unreasonable way with the exact same resentment and behavior every single time. These kinds of reactions play over and over again instead of giving us space to give new responses. And it is just like a loop recording on a website that keeps repeating over and over again. Let's say I give you a report at work and you respond negatively without discussion every time the same way. It's like a broken record. There are no fresh responses occurring in this situation, no new ideas, and therefore all change is blocked and nothing innovative can come up. Now, before any action takes place, if we do not understand this link and let go of it, the reaction will become re-stimulated by a reminder that takes place inside this link. It's like seeing the old memory card and taking action based on what you did before. Well, this is Bawa. A person has no chance to stop this from happening and change unless they are taught about this link and they want to change. So how can I change this from happening? Well, first, by gaining knowledge about the link, you first have to see it happening for yourself. I can't take it away. You have to see this for yourself. And then you start just letting that go. If you observe your day-to-day -day actions for a few days, you'll begin to notice that your own particular behavior pattern and how it's working. And when you read over what you wrote after a few days, you will discover something. Your fixed reactions of thinking, speaking, or physically doing things in the same particular way. They, it's almost like you can lay them on top of each other like this and they just match. It's because of these reactive patterns that we cannot say we are truly alive in our present time activities. First, you must identify them to let them go. Then we have to get beyond repeating the speech and actions. Although we might appear to be here and now listening, how much are we thinking and analyzing right now? Are we really at home and listening? It seems that a lot of us are like this. Our mind stops working and we're trying to live just on automatic. Adults are different in this way from little children because children don't have a large collection of recordings yet. So when they turn on their curiosity, they can still work with a clear mind. This is the wonderment factor of children. When you say children have wonderment and we adults, we don't have wonderment because <laughs> somebody said you have to give up wonderment, but you don't have to. If you understand what's happening, you can reclaim wonderment. 
Children don't use up their energy like adults do with this either. Children are still full of bright curiosity and a desire for adventure. They seem to have uncrowded open avenues for learning in their minds that we don't have anymore. They can offer us what appears to be more like natural creative responses. 